book of John, believe it or not. I think, well, it's only been, what, a week? I didn't, I didn't preach last week. Why, you know what? I couldn't remember last week because I was thinking about it. Even though Justin was doing, this, doing the service, I, I got up that morning and thought, where are we at with John? Well, see, my Bible I used to mark all that, it's packed in my back seat of my car. And, and it has been there for three weeks. So I'm kind of kind of lost. And I thought, well, maybe we've already covered this. And I'm looking at it and I think, well, actually, it's good stuff. And if I did, then it needs to be covered again. Huh? I don't think so. Uh, 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 we're we're going we're gonna to look at John, uh, the, the last part of chapter 12. And it's, it's kind of uh, dealing with belief and unbelief. And the first part deals with, with the unbelief. And, and, and then the last part is, is kind of a, a, a re-encouragement of, of you need to believe type thing. And if we think about it, Jesus' ministry has, has basically come to an end. We think, well, wait a minute, he hasn't had the last supper ready. That's, that's getting ready to happen. So he's already, already come into the city. His, his ministry to everyone else has ended. And how did it end? Mm. With a lot of unbelief. People see it and they still don't get it. They still don't understand. And so that's what we're going to look at this morning as we go through these, these verses. Uh, just, just, a, just a few verses. And so we're going to start out with John chapter 12, verse 37. And it says, and I'm using the message today. It says, all these God signs he had given them and they still didn't get it. Still wouldn't trust him. Wow. The NIV, the NIV says, uh, after, after Jesus had done all these miracle, miraculous signs in their presence, they still would not believe him. What did we say? He fed thousands upon thousands. He walked on water. He, 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 he healed the paralytic. And they still did not believe. Wow. You know, John had told us that this was going to happen in the very first chapter. Chapter 1, verse 11. He came to his own people, but they did not want him. They didn't recognize him. They wanted him crazy. So he's coming back and he's, he's, he's kind of filling us in and bringing it all to a close here, even though he still has half of his book, his letter that he hasn't written yet. So he's, he's talking about this and he's saying that, that he's, he's performed all these things and yet nobody, nobody believes who he says he is. Wow. All these God signs he'd given them and he still didn't get it. Still wouldn't trust him. And it goes on and says, this proved that the prophet Isaiah was right. God who believed God, who believed what we preached, who recognized God's arm outstretched and ready to act. Uh, now, 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 this is the message version of that passage in Isaiah, namely like Isaiah 60, right around here someplace. God, who believed what we preach? Isaiah saw that so many years ago, that Jesus was coming, and nobody was going to believe them. Even when we tell people, do they believe it all the time? I've always had a, had a, a hard time with that a hardening of the heart thing. I never quite understood that. A light bulb went off this morning. <laughs> what is it that, that we do when we disagree when somebody tells us the truth? Huh? We don't we get our hackles up a little bit? That's a hardening of the heart. Huh? The doctor tells me, Jim, you need to lose weight. And I think, no, I don't. Hard to know the heart, didn't it? And I fight that tooth and nail. And what do people do when you start talking about Jesus Christ? And you know, they're, they're all frenzy, frenzy with you. You start talking Jesus, and they start putting that wall up, don't they? So when we look at Moses and Pharaoh, he goes into Pharaoh and tells Pharaoh, you know, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Pharaoh starts to think about, what is this stupid? I'm the master of this universe. And his heart cries. And the scripture says that God hardened that heart. It's not necessarily God that did that physically. But it's just saying it's something out of our control that we just change our mind. People heard what Jesus had been preaching. They saw the miracles he was doing. 
And yet they were still told the Messiah is coming. This has to be a fake one. There's a real one that's coming. You'll know it when you see him. And he continues. First they would believe, then they couldn't. Again, just as Isaiah said. Their eyes are blinded, their hearts are hardened, so that they wouldn't see with their eyes, perceive with their hearts, and turn to me, God, so I could heal them. First, they wouldn't believe. You're not the Messiah. Then they couldn't, because they hardened their hearts. They walked around and followed him, and still wanted to. I mean, it, there's something, there's something there. But as soon as he started being convicted, they started backing off. Ah, oh, get away from me. That's hard stuff. You tell me I have to give everything. You, you tell me I have to love everything. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, my whole, my whole life has been built up on not loving people. Huh? Wow. And Isaiah said these things after he got a glimpse of God's cascading brightness that would pour through the Messiah. Remember John talks about the, this light that has come. That, that this light will drive out the darkness and those that, that see him will be, be bathed in light. And we've talked about that. Light does drive out darkness. Darkness doesn't drive out light. If you have a light ball, that darkness can't, can't dis extinguish that light. If you turn that light off, the darkness will take over. <coughs> wow. Isaiah had one of these. The brightness that will pour through the side. On the other hand, a considerable number of, of, from the ranks of the leaders did believe. A lot of the, the, the Pharisees believed. When we hear Pharisees, we ought to imagine those people just totally rejected. Hmm? What about Nicodemus? Hmm? How can I be born again? That's right. I want that. Huh? On the other hand, a considerable number of the ranks of the leaders did believe, but because of the Pharisees, they didn't come out and be open with it. They hid it. What good is our faith behind it? What, what, what good? It doesn't, do, it doesn't do anybody any It doesn't do us any good. Hmm? I'm here to tell you, when I see people accept Christ, I get excited. When I see that twinkle start in someone's eye, when they catch it, and the Holy Spirit starts to fill it, you can see it, and I get excited. That's why it's so important that we, that we come together as a church, because it excites us. Believe it or not, we're going to miss Janet when she's gone next week. I know that already. Huh? We miss when Mary's not able to be here. I miss when Sharon, I, 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 my heart breaks. Because I see that empty spot. Mm -hmm. Or when Grace can't be here. Lena can't be here. That's right. When somebody's sick and they can't be, that, that hurts me. Mm -hmm. Man, why? When, 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 when we, you know, we get up here and we start and there's two or three and, and then all of a sudden we turn around and there's 10, 12 and then there's you know, 15 or 20. And you feel the excitement, you know. And we're, we're, we're a small church. You know, churches of thousands, they don't realize that. Feed off of each other with the Holy Spirit. Exactly. We encourage one another. That's the whole purpose of a Sunday is to encourage you. Is to build people up. The Pharisees that wouldn't because they believed but they wouldn't. They, they, they stayed back and they hid and they didn't tell anybody because they didn't want to be cast out of the church. Guess what folks? You bring people in. I'm not going to throw you out. <laughs> Try me. Look to the death. They were afraid of getting kicked out of the meeting place. Isn't that terrible? Isn't that terrible? That you're afraid of opening your mouth and saying you believe because you might be cast out. Wow. wow. That's the unbelief. So this is about the belief portion. When pushing them to shove, they cared more for human approval than for God's glory. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go there, do we? Jesus 
summed it all up when he cried out, Whoever believes in me believes not just in me, but in the one who sent me. That's right. It's not about believing in that person. It's about believing in the one who sent him. It's about believing that he is the Son of God. It's about believing that he is God. It's about believing that standing on the promises that he is coming back. Huh? Standing on the promises that he died for my sins. Standing on the promises that he loves me enough to have done that. Huh? Wow, that's awesome. That he, he left his throne. He left his throne and came down to a very, very, very humble family. And that all through scriptures, he deals with usually the unlovable, the flawed, the ones that we wouldn't think of the powerful. We well, said, so what about King David? Well, yeah, okay. Where did David come from? He was a shepherd boy. That's right. And rose the power how? Basically by slot slaying the lion, right? And that's, that's what really started him. I mean, he killed the lion and that, that kind of stuff to save the sheep. But, but when he became really known by everybody, it's, it's because of his singing, his song playing, and huh? for killing the lion. God uses prostitutes. God uses fishermen. And God uses people like Saul that persecute the Christian. He goes on. Whoever looks at me is looking, in fact, at the one who sent me. I am light that's come into the world so that all who believe in me won't have to stay any longer in the dark. That's a lot of stuff right there. I've told you the story about our, our, our landlord from Germany coming and bringing, my, uh, bringing a driver's license that he found behind the radio the wall, wall here. And when I looked at that, I swore up and down it was my dad. How did my dad? My dad didn't come to Germany. I honestly had to look at the birth date. He was like, I don't believe this. Whoever looks at me is looking at, in fact, at the one who sent me. And when they look at Jesus Christ, they're looking at God. We reflect our parents. We reflect who we are. He reflected the one who sent him. And he is a light to the world so that all who believe in him the king don't have to stay in the dark. They're in that light. Now, last night, Tony and I came over here to, 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 to change out that, that exit sign. And, and, you know, I started pulling the old one off. And I got to a certain point, it's got a little short, and all of a sudden the light came on. <laughs> oh, we'll just go ahead and leave this one up. And of course, you turn it back and the light goes out. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're not going to play this game. But you know, then you take it off and put the new one on, we turn the lights off, there's light on there. Duh. Huh? He said, well, that's really smart, Jim. You know, you're really getting with it here. But the thing is, it drove out of the darkness. This place is pitch dark at night. I've tripped over this altar before. And I know where it's at. The light. Jesus says, I'm a light to a dark world. Yeah, we're a fallen world. It is getting very, very dark when we look at the things that are going on. And Jesus says, I can light that up. Trust me. If anyone hears what I am saying and doesn't take it seriously, I don't reject him. Jesus doesn't reject him. I don't come to reject the world. I came to save the world. But you need to know that whoever puts me off, refusing to take in what I'm saying, is willfully choosing rejection. Oh. See, we like to think that when we don't accept it, that's not, that's not us. Huh? That's why I like this passage. Because it's willfully rejecting the Savior. The Word, the Word made flesh, that I have spoken and that I am, that Word and no other is the last Word. Wow. I'm not making any of this up on my own. The Father who gave, sent me, gave me orders, told me what to say and how to say it. And I know exactly what his command produces. Real and eternal life. Real and eternal life. That's all I have to say. 
What the Father told me, I tell you. Wow. Oh. Think about that. That's all I have to say. I've told you what the, what the Master wants. I've told you what God wants. What more do you want me to say? You've seen the miracles. You've seen the things that, 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 that we've done. I don't want you to believe in the miracles. That's, that's not it. Believe in the one who sent me. That's right. Believe in the love that he has. Forget about all this, this killing and dying that, that, that we focus on. Forget about this, this thing of God hardening the heart. That's not a God thing. That's, that's, a, that's a human thing. That's a fallen thing. But God uses those. Going back to Pharaoh. God uses that to show that even Pharaoh's resolve didn't matter because God said, let my people go. And it happened. <coughs> Jesus came as light to the world that cannot be extinguished, will not be extinguished. They tried it. They covered that light up in a tomb for three days. Couldn't keep it hid. That light came back. Praise God. Why don't you stand so close? Father God, we.